Elevate TV, Advancing Kingdom Lifestyle. says that the name of the Lord is a strong tower 
and the righteous run in it and they are slain. The name of the Lord is a strong tower and the righteous they run in it and they are saved. There is no any other name that we've been given here on earth that are the mention of that name. All disease is healed. At the mention of that name, troubles disappear. At the mention of that name, demons they tremble. At the mention of that name, Liberty is found at the mention of that name. Oh, Shakata Rabosiara Mashato Rabosiara Maganda. We are not just singing, we are declaring the name of Jesus. We are lifting the name of Jesus. We are exalting the name of Jesus. We are declaring that the name of Jesus reigns in the mighty name of Jesus. Therefore, Jesus has been given a name that is above all other names. That at the mention of that name, oh, shekatara bakasya kota At the mention of that name, there is freedom. At the mention of that name, there is salvation. There is no any other name above, beneath. In the mighty name of Jesus that supersedes the name of Jesus there is no any other name that supersedes the name of Jesus there is no any other name that supersedes the name of Jesus there is no any other name that supersedes the name of Jesus gods have names diseases have names Nations have names, presidents have names, churches have names, Korea Gosapaya have names, kingdoms have names, Leprekiano Sapayando Robokanda, societies have names, even yourself you have a name, Aroko Poso Kotapaya, principalities have names, powers have names. None of them supersedes the name of Jesus. None of them supersedes the name of Jesus. None of them supersedes the name of Jesus. That name. None of them supersedes the name of Jesus. your mouth and begin to speak the name of Jesus even as we worship in the mighty name of Jesus open your mouth and begin to speak the name of Jesus speak the name of Jesus over every trouble speak the name of Jesus over your mind speak the name of Jesus over that situation in the mighty name of Jesus lift up your voice and speak the name of Jesus speak the name of Jesus speak the name of Jesus over every fear speak the name of Jesus over every anxiety speak the name of Jesus over every discouragement over every oppression we speak the name of Jesus over the land in the name of Jesus we speak the name of Jesus we speak the name of Jesus oh shapakata rabaganda rabasanda rekapakata radiakosa payanda we speak the name of Jesus we speak the name of Jesus oh hallelujah I speak the name 
name of Jesus. I speak the name of Jesus. Oh, the name that is exalted. The name that is above every other name. Oh, I speak the name of Jesus. Ah, Shabaka Satarabaganda. If I like you, I would lift up my voice and speak that name. And speak that name. And decree that name. Oh, Shalabagala Basando Robosikayando Robosayano. Jina la Yesu lina uwezo. Jina la Yesu lina uwezo. Jina la Yesu lina uwezo.
certain dimensions God emphasizes in times of worship. I like that matter of the name of Jesus. Somebody say the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The rushes run to it. What happens? They are safe. We thank God for the name of Jesus. Amen. By just coming to the house here today and declare to declare the name of Jesus then you are safe. We are safe. That's the essence of salvation. Safety. Safety is one of those uh, essence of salvation. Now, um, yesterday night in the midweek service, I shared something interesting. Uh, there's something with the sound there. I don't know what it is. Just some feedback. Just take care of it. Um, the Jesus teaching on matters, provisions, and we thank God for what we had yesterday. But here in the lunch hour, I began talking about the material dimensions of wealth. 
and talking about that scriptures are not ashamed to describe people in terms of material wealth. That is a good place to pass through. Amen. There's another matter that I will raise a little later, uh, even as we get into continuity of this message. There's another matter I will raise, which I believe the Holy Spirit um, you know, is also teaching me or reminding me and telling me. Matters of wealth, listen to this. Wealth is also uncovered using the grace we call generational blessing. You have to consider generational blessing. You have to consider generational blessing is something that we cannot escape if we are pursuing these dimensions of wealth. Are we together? And so that's a matter if I get time, I'll begin raising it up. Now, yesterday, uh, let, let me read two verses that we just mentioned yesterday uh, bypassing before we get back to the material dimension of wealth. Uh, we were defining with scriptures prosperity. Read Psalms 127, I mean 122, verse 7. Uh, verse 6 had talked about uh, blessing, go back to verse 6, pray for the peace of Jerusalem, may they prosper who love you. Just by loving Jerusalem, you prosper. Simple. Simple instruction. Are we together? Remember in, in uh, Job 36, 11, we say those who obey him and serve him, they shall spend their days in, uh, in prosperity <clears throat> and their years in pleasure. Those who do what? Those who obey and serve him. One of the dimensions of obeying God, back to 122 Psalms, is to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. It's a simple thing you can do. Are we together? But then verse 7 says, Peace be within your wars, prosperity within your palaces. Anything God establishes within that locality, God declares, let there be not only peace, but also prosperity. If God helps you to establish a family, God helps you to establish a ministry, then within those wars of that ministry and within that family, may there be two things. What are they? Peace and prosperity. So I declare that in your house in Jesus' name. When our money ya kutosha, atandoto zenu sikosawa, kulara usiku, you are not turning ups and down as if there are demons there. That is a Jesus zone not a crying, suffering zone. Your house must have peace. That's part of the prosperity. So, so if you don't say amen, na vila ni meongelelea your family yako. Yo kitu si mepita tu kwa kichwa kwa hivyo meenda na huko. Wewe ni nini. Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Isaiah 48 verse 15. Let's see another word. I just gave you the scriptures yesterday. I, even I, have spoken. Yes, I have called him. <clears throat> and I have brought him. And his way will prosper. I told you this aspect of prosperity is not just having uh, material goods or money in your hand. It's actually you progressing in your life successfully. To your destiny successfully. So... Him whom God has called, this is a, a messianic prophecy, God will make his way to prosper. May that also be our portion. Glory to God. And Second Chronicles chapter 7 and verse 11, the Bible says uh, about uh, Solomon, he said Solomon finished the house of the Lord and the king's house and Solomon successfully accomplished all that came into his heart to make in the house of the Lord and his own house. Praise God. So in his own house, he prospered. When you hear, he successfully accomplished all that came in his, uh, into his heart. This man had something within him that made all that he touched to prosper. Like Joseph, all that Joseph touched, he prospered. Even when he went to prison, he became the prefect. Even in prison. Sio nyinyi. Wengine wakifungwa. They wrote there. But akina Yusufu wakifungwa. 
hata huko wanakuwa overseer bishop or prison there is something in them hallelujah si tukubaliana hata wewe kwa sababu uko na Kristo ndani yako wherever you are you cannot be the tail you must be the head for kingdom purpose hallelujah so that solomon he in his own house he prospered huh? and he pushed forward glory to god then yesterday we de- we said the, uh, these people are described by their material condition luke 16 verse 1 the rich man he had a steward he had a, an employee i pray that even brethren will also have employees you may be tired are we together we talked about the rich young ruler mark 10 verse 21 and 22 he had great possessions when jesus told him to sell all he had and take to the poor he was sad he didn't like it he couldn't pass through the eye of a needle until kasababisha yesu aseme kweli hawa matajiri hawa ngumu sana kuingia ufalme wa mungu kwa sababu hawataki kuvua hiyo mizigo hiyo mizigo so remember when god makes you wealthy he can also ask for the wealth any time glory to god and then we talked about job how he had <laughs> jesus this man i don't know somebody should calculate we leave that to young people uh, to to calculate the wealth of job 7000 sheep 3000 camels 500 yoke of oxen you know a thousand you know she asses i mean this guy was amazing then we talked about abraham chapter 13 uh, verse 2 of genesis that he was very rich in cattle in silver and in gold i don't know why god should have just said this was a very worshipful man job should have said this man is just a father of nations job should have said this man i have a big destiny for him <clears throat> but god goes ahead and says he was also rich so next time mungu anakutaja next time mungu anakuintroduce as he introduced to aseme yule ako na nguo ya red atafuta kitu kingine ambao uko nayo ambayo inaweza kutumika katika ufalme tuko pamoja sasa mage ule pasta ako na nini ah, okay pasta hiyo mtakubali ungependa pasta wakae maskini as poor as a church rat church mouse and as poor as a pastor they said in the last century keep the pastor poor to keep him humble it was a lie What about you who are rich God calls you to be a pastor what will you do will you say let me first be poor no we need everybody whether those on the pulpit or those on the pews everybody to be richer better so that we advance the kingdom because we have an agenda we are not just having stuff to just eat and drink and sit merry we'll be fools like that man who planted his huge field he his farms prospered he expanded the storehouses he said uh, i'm going to expand because my land is producing amazingly then he said i will sit back and eat and just be happy kambe you are full tonight sole yako inahitajika pande ile hizi vitu zaachia nani so for us who are born again wealth prosperity materials uh, anything we have is for the glory of god umekubali hivyo ngapi umekubali is for the glory of god are we together you have to constantly assure god that you are not greedy you are not mean it's not about you it's about the kingdom are we together sio tu kuweka chakula kwa meza although atakuonjesha chakula kizuri angependa ukae na njaa lakini zaidi ya njaa lazima kuwa na sababu ya kutosha lazima tupeleke injili na kila taifa na hapa tuondoe umaskini Kenya Afrika hii ondolewe umaskini wahubiri wote ambao wana ufunuo huu kama wanaweza ku target not only preach the crusade but also find ways to remove poverty in those areas and then we work together my god then we involve the business people and the marketplace people that have all manner of skills and trainings together as a church of Christ we decide we are the sword and the light of the world in five years we can change Kenya in five years we can do what Let me tell you something. Find a church with a vision and join them. A vision to change the community. Kwa pamoja. Okay. So, the Bible is not ashamed 
to identify people in terms of their material wealth. Don't have false humility. Sema mimi kila kitu nataka tu ni kuingia mbinguni. Ai. Peke yake. Hiyo <coughs> unaingia tu kisha kama umeokoka utaingia. Na unaishi maisha kulingana vile Yesu angependa na utakatifu wake na haki yake utaingia. Huko utaingia kuna shida. Lakini seriously sio kuingia tu. Bado tuko hapa. Na kuna mashimo. We need to use our wealth. I pray for one day before Jesus returns. Churches will be tarmacking roads, building bigger hospitals, establishing schools, uh, providing affordable housing. May that day come. See one but I don't know what you pray for. Uh, one day why don't you go on your knees in the house and say, "Lord, si unifanye tu mo billionaire, mbona unaanza kufanya hizi vitu?" Na usaidie Mungu hizo billion zikija moyo wangu unajua inakuwa ga wiki. Tafadhali usaidie moyo wangu isivutwe ingie kwa dhambi. Because hapo kuna shida pia. Because who are you? We, we don't know how strong your heart is. Maybe it is better ukae na hizo 200,000s uko nazo na 50s. Maana ikifika millions unaeta hata kufanya kama jobs wife. I mean not you. I'm talking to somebody online. Yeye mko sawa ndio mko hapa. Look at Lot Genesis 14 verse 11 Huyu jamaa Lot Wakati hao walikuja kuchukua watu they took then they took all goods of Sodom and Gomorrah and all the provisions all their provisions and when they away next verse they also took Lot Abraham's brother's son who dwelt in Sodom and his goods and departed at least so I mean Lot alikuwa na kitu ya kuchukuliwa. Sio yeye peke yake alichukuliwa. He had some goods. Nyinyi amuko Sodom na amuna kitu na waombea. Okay, hiyo point na wakati si mzuri sana. Lakini mmeshika point ama mjashika. Si wale hata hata huko uh, this this nephew to Lot. He had remember he had a generation of blessing. He belonged to an amazing family this guy lot now don't blame lot too much because you find him in heaven his daughters were virgin in sodom his daughters were virgins where niambia kama iko nairobi na isi sodom okay wale kwa kuingilia ile muji tunaishi okay let's talk about the father in luke 15 Verse 12 the bible says and the younger of them because this man had two sons said to his father father give me the portion of goods that falls to me and he divided them his livelihood this father he was not just a father he had something he had something to divide to the sons niko pamoja These are biblical men that are being mentioned in scripture but they are associated with what they had. Na ukijana alichukua akaenda zake he was not well trained he was not well mentored he did not know investment he loved pleasure he didn't have character so what he took got finished. He came back for more. The father still had more. You cannot exhaust where there is a generation of blessing. Hallelujah. Are we together? The next chapter Luke 16 verse 19 there are two people mentioned. At least one of them uh, was a poor man, but there was a rich man who was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared some such as I mean some seriously his food was very taste every day so this man i know he had problems because he did not worship god but he was a rich man if you look at the, the rest of that story but there was a certain beggar named lazarus full of sores who was laid at his gate uh, desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell on the rich man's table moreover the dogs came and licked his sores i think this guy was poor 
So it was that the beggar died and was carried by uh, the angels. Where was he taken? To Abraham's bosom. Remember Abraham, he left a legacy on the earth. Are we together? He left a legacy. He could be given this man. But the rich man died because he didn't have faith and he was buried. Now he went to tormentors. He went to Hades, hell, lifted up his eyes. He saw Abraham on the other side. I think either distance the Amalia Gua na Pandaile Ingine. He saw Lazarus on the other side. So he scripture na sumbua kwa tasama. Mi mi ningependa kuwa Lazarus. Singependa kuwa kama rich man because rich man haku make haku make hange hange was make. There used to be a man hange was make. Tunamgoja 2027 na kuja tena. Hange was make. So eh cuz I'm a potter. So I wish we can lead him to Christ and be he becomes a preacher. Praise God. Because God desires that all men may come to the knowledge of faith. Praise God. Surely, go Jackie In this verse, I know you wouldn't want to be the rich man. But would you want to be the poor man? So your story was an hour. Because a poor man is even sicker than Job. He is even begging. The rich man is only that he never came to life church. Would have preached to him and he would have got sent saved. He would have gone also to Abraham's bosom. The father of faith. Now. Zacchaeus. I like this other rich man. Chapter 19 verse 1. Jesus entered a pass through Jericho. And there was a man named Zacchaeus. Was a chief tax collector. And he was rich. This man was in charge of uh, revenue authority in their country. He was a very senior man. Hello. Very senior man. I know Boswen is a fault. Like in case Boswen is a fault. I think this guy can take over. It's only that this one had also other problems. He was rich and then later when Jesus entered his house, he began to confess that actually some of his riches are suspect. <laughs> I like when Jesus comes upon people, they open up. Eh? Lord, Lord, I give half of my goods to the poor. And if I've taken anything from anyone by false accusation, nani alimuriza, how he took he is the one coming out and he's trying to be humble. Say, if I have taken. No, he should just say, I have taken, I have taken uh, money from, you know, by false accusation. But then good news, he says, I will restore four times. In other words, even when he restores four times, he will still not be broke. Jesus has no problem with rich people. Tell that to your neighbor. Jesus has no problem with the rich people because he can touch them and save them. Are we together? Luke 21, verse 1 to 4. Let's clarify this one. One time, Jesus looked up and saw the rich putting their gifts into the treasury, offering time. Somebody say, offering time. And he saw also a certain poor widow putting in two mites. He only kidogo sana. And he said, truly, I say to you that this poor widow has put in more than them all. For all those, or for all these out of their abundance, have put in offerings for God. But she, out of her poverty, put in all the livelihood that she had. So something touched the heart of Christ when he looked at this widow. It's not leader the might, but it's everything she had. That means her spiritual understanding was deeper. That seek first the kingdom of God and all these other things shall be added to you. The only thing she had, she decided to give it. 
Try that one day. Tell your neighbor, try that one day. Try that one day before you leave earth. What? But Try one day. Say, I'm going to give something significant from my livelihood. Let me tell you, it will touch the heart of God even today. And there are certain stories of this nature. There was a woman who had an alabaster box, very precious oil. We are told it was worth one year's wage. She broke it, poured it at the feet of Jesus. The manukato was amazing. Jesus said, everywhere the gospel is preached, this act of this woman will always be remembered or she will be remembered. Praise God. Even this poor widow, she is remembered. We are talking about her over 2,000 years later. Elisha met this poor widow who had nothing in the house but a little oil and jar of you know of oil and flour and she 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 encountered Elisha and said go borrow vessels in second kings 4 now in first kings 17 there is Elijah and the widow of Seraphath oh make a cake for me i eat first she had said this is the last one we eat with my son we die and the lord through the prophetic ministry says no make one for me first it looks like god wants to eat first the rest of us, we shall encounter provisions when God is happy. When God is happy. Glory to God. And so, this is how we need to handle wealth. In our minds, in our attitude, in our spirit, this is how we need to handle wealth. That it doesn't matter what you have, little or much. When God comes in and asks for something, he is number one. Then God can trust you. God can trust you. Let me tell you something. God is in the business of enriching and empowering his church. That there is a course, class. He takes everybody that he wants to use on the next level. Morris Arura said, God never intended to use a man until first he gives him an experience. Listen, on matters, finances, matters, spirituality, ministry, preaching, teaching, leading, witnessing, whatever matters of becoming certain light in there, you will still be tested. Even matters of prosperity and wealth, we will still be tested. God never takes anybody to another level without testing him. Are we together? The question is, will we pass the test? Stack wapea story angu kiso mana ni mepeana miaka mingi vile nilikuwa Switzerland Nikaona utajiri. Iyo ni inchi kuna utajiri mwingi. Carpet, my friend. Equipment, sound. Kakanisa kazuri tu kadogo. Sauti waneka kadogo mbaka ato usikina. Kusema hii. Inuwa sauti. Na wakona equipment ingine kwa store. Hawa to me. Sa hiyo Nairobi yata microphone mojo kupata ni shida. Kusema watu waguze tu na God wanipe. Hii sound ene kaupiri na huko Afrika. Ngo sikupewa kitu. Kapisa siku ishiri na mojo. I didn't ask. Maybe that's why I was not given. But later God spoke to me, told me, I brought you here to test you on money and you have passed the test. Because I preached and was not given any offering anywhere. In any case, I was not looking for any. Nipewa hida kisu. Hida kisu. Pandai nafungua soda. Pandai nafungua. Pandai nani. Yoka kisu. The Swiss Army knife. Bion nipewa. 2001. Lakini kufika kwa airport, September 11 had happened. Ulikuwa na huge banner saying all Caesars, knives, Nini, kulikuwa na big container. So, gift yangu na jwani kwa mebeba hii ni kifuraia. I could not enter the plane with it. I, up to today, I still mourn my knife. Because it was a very precious knife. I pray this year, munga kinpea na fasi. Ama mwakayote, nitanunua yangu. Takuja na onewa kamari kwa ofisi yangu. Hile mutu ni kimukanzo wa naleta shida. Naza kufungua yoka kisu. Ukija kwa ngu uja umaki umeomba. Praise God. Praise God. Am I drunk? Anyway, so, but lakini munga li nabene repeat a test. Na ni kweli, repeat a your test. Na ni kamabia ni yonyeshe ni pata max ngapi. Ni pata 70 over 100. Because the driver who came to pick me up, na ni driver tuwata si pasi, I didn't pay a 70,000. 30 minutes later, waka ni ambia, okay, kama ni mipita ni yonyeshe ni mipitaji. Mututua kwa na mpango, waka ni pay a 70,000. 
Even the journey may be better. Seventy over hundred is here in Azan Perga University. Praise the Lord Jesus. Listen, my brothers and sisters, you will be tested on this matter. The question is, will you pass? Your patience will be tested. Your giving will be tested. If God tells you to do something for somebody financially, it is a test. If you do it well, I'm telling you the truth. God will take you to the next level. Even at the family level. I think every marriage where they are fighting over money is because they failed the test. I think that's a very powerful point. Mulipita test yenu, hamuku pita mulianguka, diyo muko kinda ngaten baka sasa. Sikuire muta pita i test, the love of money will be removed. You begin to appreciate each other. God will become your source, more than your husband being a source. Although the scripture says the husband should provide. But those who have no husbands, they also have God as our source. Glory to God. Please pass the test. Pass what? So I'm amazed as I bring this to a close to hear that uh, wealth and this matter of prosperity we are dealing with is also a generational matter. At a generational what? Generational matter. And so I think it will be fair to just introduce that maybe tomorrow on the generational blessing as part of what you must lay in your spirit as a biblical foundation. Because I think we hear more about generational curses, but you need to know the blessing is greater than a curse. The blessing is simply empowered to succeed. A curse is empowered to fail. Anything you do, you fail. That looks to be a curse. I know there are people who say there are no curses. Direct translation from my mother. Nimefanya nini? Wanasema hakuna nini? There were curses. That's why Jesus became a curse. Because I was there in the first place. So if he has become a curse for us by being nailed on a tree, according to Galatians 3. That means, wale watu wote wanajaribu kuokoka. They are coming from a world of curses. Na wale wanaokoka wakiingia ndani ya wokovu, kabla wajakuwa discipled, na kujua neno, na kujua ukweli, ili ukweli waweke huru. Bwana wanasumburi wana nini? Na ile foundations za zamani. Kwa hivyo, don't dismiss anybody who is struggling and they came to Christ the other day. Take time to teach them to so stand in Christ until the voices from the past are minimized or their voice in Christ is now louder than the voice of the spirit of the world. But don't dismiss the devil. Atakuja kukusalimia. Kuna dugu mwingine rafiki ya rafiki yangu na pia ni rafiki ya udhuwa kutani sana labda na nisikia saa hii. Nasikia liena kufundisha. Ye ni pasi pastor tuwe menda kwa dauses mali na nafundisha kwa shule na pia ni pastor hivi mubiri. Akaza kusema mimi si believe in witchcraft because I talk as hile kanisa sa zamani. They don't believe in deliverance, power, demons casting out. He doesn't believe. Na haka make mistake kusema kwa staff room kwa mba he doesn't believe in these things. Na ku make matters worse. Hako kwa county moja zile county za UK. Muna jua hizo counties. Za ukambani. Hey, ili wefunzo kwake na kwa wengine ambao wanafikiria kuna shaitani akiwa kwa rumu yake jioni amepika kachakula yake anasikia kwa rufu a doom a doom somebody is walking na yeye akachukua panga ana nje aone ni nani huyu mwizi anajaribu hakuna mtu rudi tena kakaka bado akasikia kuna tembewo kuna watu wanafanya nini ai akiona kama ni mchezo Karai yake iko hapo imeinuka hivi. Ndio akajua kumbe kuna wenyewe uko kwa hewa. Eh? Leo hii 
Deliverance is a word he uses every week. Are we together? Hivyo So wale wanasema hakuna cases ni sawa, hakuna kwenu, lakini wa Kenya wanateseka. Wasaidie. Are we together? But let me read something. I'll do the generational blessings from tomorrow. Let me read something as a conclusion of this matter. I've been dealing with the biblical foundations for matters wealth so that we can have an understanding that this thing imetoka kwa ba kwa Bible. Are we together? We read Genesis 1. We read uh, Genesis 1. We read chapter 2. God placing man on Garden of Eden, Genesis 1. He gave us the five blessings. He blessed them and commanded them to be fruitful and multiply and all that. Genesis 2 verse 20. God asks man to name the animals, give them names. Uh, he named cattle, bird, I mean cattle, birds, every beast of the field. So, uh, and so forth. So God akatumia mwanadamu ataye ajimudu to declare, to also enter in part of the creation because God wants to involve man in the blessing. But by chapter 6 of Genesis, there was a problem. Man's heart was very wicked and evil. God decided to finish everybody. He organized with the Noah to build an ark, you know, three floors and everything. Finally, the ark was built. And the flood came. And people died. Only eight people were saved. Noah's family. Situlisamata mafundi wa Noah, hawa kuokoka. Na walisaidia Noah. Walikataa kuingia mana hata sasa hizi tunahubiri jumbe kama hizi kuna wale wanakataa lakini wachache wanakubali na wale wanakubali ndio baraka hii na wafuata kwa jina la Yesu glory to god then in genesis chapter 9 is a new beginning read verse 1 so god blessed noah and his sons what did he say to them be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth. Is that not like Genesis 1.28? God is starting again. Every time he wants to work with somebody to accomplish his mission on the earth, he will reactivate the original blessing. May you in 21st century, we in the 21st century, may we also tap into this original blessing. Because let me tell you, every time God's word goes forth, never returns void. So since God spoke it, the proceeding word is still available. Today I know how we are blessed. In Acts chapter 3, verse 26. Yeah. Here, the apostles are saying to the Jewish people, do you fast God having raised up his servant Jesus what did he do with Jesus sent him to bless you today's blessing is packaged through Jesus and in turning away everyone of you from your iniquities then Jesus begins the process of releasing the blessing in your life. If you have Jesus, you have access to the original blessing hey. of being fruitful, whether physically or spiritually. Glory to God. Multiplying, hallelujah, filling the earth. In other words, your scope is that inside of you, there is potential that needs to be activated and it can fill the whole earth. Inside of us, the ministry God has given us has a potential to feel the whole earth and become an international ministry. Did you hear what I said? So, this blessing, somebody say the blessing. We need to pursue the blessing because in Hebrews, not Hebrews, Proverbs 10, 22, we find the blessing is also a person. He says, the blessing of the Lord makes one rich and he that's no sorrow. It is not it at sorrow. No sorrow. It's not an it. The blessing here is a person. Hey. That person also shows up in this book of Proverbs as wisdom. Seek him. Wisdom. 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 So 
hizi vitu naomba zitaingia katika maisha yetu ili kwamba tusimame tukiwa watu wa kufaulu na sio watu wa kufeli praise the name of jesus so let's all stand up and pray and i believe you walk into the blessing let's see you tomorrow kesho sema kesho god willing we'll be here tomorrow and the way it looks he is willing blessed be jesus let me let me pray because i've done this before and it has worked let me place the blessing of god upon you go and work with it you see fathers bless their children i'm not claiming i'm your father but i'm a father in the city and you are a child of god in the city tap into the blessing lift your hand as soon as i said that i felt the anointing these things make god happy because we are never raised for ourselves we are raised for the whole body of christ heavenly father we lift our hands in your presence we appreciate there is a blessing called a generational blessing is the original blessing from genesis that was passed on to adam and eve passed on to the next generation of noah is the same blessing that was given to abram same blessing he passed on to jake to isaac it was passed on to jacob the same blessing that landed on david hey bagato shazata is the same blessing that we find in christ jesus and today any person that is in christ he is a new creation the old struggles old diseases old curses have passed away and behold the new has come this newness is through jesus i pray in the mighty name of the lord that original blessing release it lord i release it now upon god's people i declare you are blessed in the mighty name of jesus that means you are empowered to succeed you are empowered to make it sarosa gata i cut off demonic agenda over you and i declare the blessing of god over your life take it and go and succeed in the marketplace succeed in your family succeed in your life succeed spiritually succeed physically succeed mentally succeed health wise succeed in your relationships succeed in your family i declare you are the head and not the tail sapayeta somebody thank god thank god receive it by faith oh sharaze gebetosha ya Shiara hasate razi abada. Oh, victory belongs to Jesus. Victory belongs to me. yours the glorious name of the lord and as we give our offerings father receive these offerings in your presence as part of our obedience as part of our service in jesus name we pray amen get an offering serve god with your offerings serve god worship god with your offerings do it generously in jesus mighty name and enjoy your afternoon thank you uh we're gonna see you tomorrow uh continue morning glory lunch hours tonight uh the gathering of champions for young people all is thursday night 
in this place. You're welcome. To God be the glory. In Jesus' name. Shalom. Drop your offering there. Drop your offering. You're